Welcome to the day 11 video, which is continuing section 5-4 complex numbers. We're going to do two things in this video. First, we're going to rationalize the denominator, which is dividing with complex numbers, and then we're going to solve quadratic equations that have complex solutions. So first thing is rationalizing. In yesterday's video, we add, added, subtracted, and multiplied complex numbers. Now we're going to divide them. As you notice, this video is going to all be no calculator. Okay. So in math, you're not allowed to have i in the denominator of a fraction. In the numerator, fine, not in the denominator. So looking at the first example, this 3 add 6i in the denominator is an issue. 2i in the numerator is fine, but we need to get rid of i in the denominator. In order to do that, we do something called rationalizing the denominator. That means multiplying the denominator by what's called the conjugate. So I'm going to write this over to the right. If you have a number a plus bi, the conjugate is a minus bi. So the a stays the same, the real part stays the same, but the imaginary part switches signs. So here the real part stays the same, so 3 stays the same. The imaginary part flips. So instead of positive 6i, it's going to be negative 6i. If I multiply the denominator by that, I also need to multiply the numerator. Okay, and now I need to multiply. In the numerator, I have to distribute that 2i, so it becomes 6i subtract 12i squared. In the denominator, this is multiplying like we did yesterday. So I'm going to multiply using a box. So I have 3 add 6i, and I have 3 subtract 6i. So this becomes 9, positive 18i, negative 18i, and negative 36i squared. If I did this right, the i's should cancel. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, you still have i squared. That's true, but I know that i squared is negative 1. So this is 9 subtract 36i squared. Okay, don't start canceling stuff. We can't cancel yet. First thing is we need to get rid of the i squared in numerator and denominator. So this is 6i subtract 12 multiplied by negative 1. This is 9 subtract 36 multiplied by negative 1. So this is 6i add 12 over 9 add 36. Okay, in the numerator, I can't simplify that anymore. 6i add 12 is just 6i add 12. They're not like terms. The denominator, 9 add 36 is 45. I have one last step. Last step is determining, do I have any common factors I can divide out of 6, 12, and 45? Well, I should know that they're all divisible by 3. So if I divide everything by 3, I get 2i add 6 all over 15. And that's my final answer. Okay. We're going to go on to this third example and then come back to the second one. So again, I have 5i in the denominator. That's an issue. I'm not allowed to have i in the denominator. So I need to do something to get rid of that i. I need to multiply by the conjugate. Now this one's different because I only have an imaginary part. I don't have a real part. So the a doesn't matter. It's the b that's changing. So I need to change my imaginary part. I need to flip the sign. So rather than positive 5i, I'm going to multiply by negative 5i. Okay, distributing in the numerator. I get negative 20i subtract 5i squared. In the denominator, I get negative 25i squared. Okay, now again, I need to simplify the i squareds. So I get subtract 5 multiplied by negative 1, and then I get negative 25 multiplied by negative 1. So this is negative 20i add 5 all over positive 25. Now I need to think, what are negative 25 and 25 divisible by? Well, they're all divisible by 5, so I'm going to divide everything by 5. I get negative 4i add 1, you need that 1, all over 5. And that's my final answer. Okay, let's go back up to example 2. I'm going to have you all try this one. You need to rationalize the denominator. So remember that your first step is to multiply by the conjugate. So change the positive to a negative, 
and then simplify. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. So we should have multiplied by 3 subtract 5i. So it's just the i part that changes signs. So I'm doing it on the left since I ran out of room. Okay, in the numerator, I'm going to distribute the negative 2i. So I get negative 6i add 10i squared all over. Okay, to figure out the denominator, I'm going to do a box. If you don't like the box, that's fine, but you need to figure out some way to do it. So this becomes 9, 15i, negative 15i, and negative 25i squared. Okay, my i's cancel, which is good. In the denominator, I'm left with 9, subtract 25i squared. Okay, I'm not done yet. I'm not allowed to leave i squared. So I'm going to substitute negative 1 in for i squared. So I get negative 6i, add 10, multiplied by negative 1 all over 9 subtract 25 multiplied by negative 1. So this becomes negative 6i subtract 10 all over 9 add 25. So negative 6i subtract 10 all over 34. Now last thing, what goes into 6, 10, and 34? Well they're all divisible by 2, so I'm going to divide everything by 2. I get negative 3i subtract 5 all over 17. So hopefully we got that. If not, hopefully it was just a small mistake, or hopefully we now see what our mistake was. We will be doing some more examples like this in class, so if you're conf confused, please make sure you bring your questions to class. Okay, if you would please flip the page. Okay. So now we're getting into the real objective of this video, which is solving um, quadratic equations that have complex solutions or imaginary solutions. So just as a review, what does it mean to find the zeros of the quadratic equation or to solve the quadratic equation? Well, it means finding the x values where y is 0. Okay, if you remember from yesterday's video, we looked at a quadratic that looks something like this, which we said that's going to have two imaginary or two complex solutions because it has no real solutions. So today we're going to be looking at quadratics that don't actually cross the x-axis. So they don't have any real solutions or any real points. They're going to have complex or imaginary solutions. Um, we're going to solve quadratic equations with complex solutions the same way we've been solving before, except not by graphing. We're either going to take the square root or we're going to try to factor. So let's see what we can get done. Let's look at example one. It says 4x squared add 256 equals zero. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 256. So I get 4x squared equals negative 256. I'm trying to get that x squared alone. If I divide everything by four, I get x squared equals negative 64. Okay, now that the x squared's alone, I can take the square root. Now, at this point, I should notice that I'm going to have some imaginary solutions. Because when I take the square root, I'm going to have the square root of a negative. So that should kind of uh, give me a hint right there that I'm going to have imaginary solutions, or I'm going to have solutions with i in them. Okay, so I get x equals square root of 64 is 8. I'm going to have an i because it's negative. And then anytime you take the square root, you're going to get a positive and a negative solution. So here are our two answers, positive 8i and negative 8i. Okay, remember, x squared means we're going to have two solutions. That's why you need to do the positive and the negative. So when you take the square root, you get a positive and a negative answer. Let's look at example two. So 3x squared add 240 equals 0. Okay, so let's start by subtracting 240. So I get 3x squared is equal to negative 240. If I divide by 3, I get x squared equals negative 80. Okay, I know that this is going to be imaginary because I have a squared equal to a negative number. So if I take the square root, I get the square root of negative 80. So I know I'm going to have an i. So over to the right here, I'm going to simplify that. Okay, so I'm going to have a negative 1, and then I still have my 80. 
Okay, so 80 is 16 and 5. 16 is 4 and 4. And each 4 is 2, 2, 2, 2. So I have one pair of 2's. I have another pair of 2's. And then I have this 5 left over. Okay, so 1, 2 in each pair comes out. So I have 2 multiplied by 2. So this, this 2 came out. This 2 came out. The 5 stays under the root. And because I had the square root of negative 1, that becomes an i. So this becomes 4i root 5. Now I told you, when you put in the square root, you have to have a positive and a negative. So we get x equals plus or minus 4i root 5. So you have to remember, when you put in the square root, when you take the square root, you get a positive and you get a negative. Okay, so right now, take a minute and try example 3 on your own, please. Pause the video and come back when you are finished. Okay, so we should have started by subtracting 4. So we get x squared equals negative 4. Take the square root. The square root of 4 is 2. I'm going to have an i because of the negative, and it should be positive and negative. So you should have gotten positive and negative 2i. Okay, pause the video, try example 4 on your own, please. Okay, I'm not going to show you the work, but I will tell you that you should have gotten positive and negative 2i root 15. So if you didn't get that, you need to go back and find your mistake, please. Last one is example 5. It says, find the values of x and y that make the following equation true. So we have two complex numbers. Remember that complex numbers have a real part and an imaginary part. So here is the real part on the left side, and here is the real part on the right side. Here is the imaginary part, and here is the imaginary part. The imaginary part has the i. Okay, that gives us two equations. I have x add 1 equals 3, that's the real part, and then I have 2yi equals negative 6i. Those are the imaginary parts. Subtracting 1 from the red equation, I get x equals 2. And then from the blue equation, if I divide everything by 2i, I get y equals negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, and my i's cancel, so y equals negative 3. So those ones shouldn't be too bad. Uh, please bring any questions that you have to class, and we will do some more examples together. Thank you.